Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here with Matt Richards at the acoustic guitar concert. Um, Mr. Richards, could you please give us some information about the program today? Oh, well, I'm going to be playing a uh, variety of tunes that I normally play on solo guitar, uh, some of which will be included on my upcoming CD release, Balance, which will be out uh, in, in the beginning of next year. Uh, there's some of these are newer pieces that I've just composed or just, you know, worked to the point where they're arranged to be performed, uh, you know, before a live audience. And some are pieces that have been in my repertoire for some time. Uh, I'll be combining my own uh, self-composed material along with the uh, music of others, uh, like George Harrison, you know, I think we all know who he is, one of the Beatles, um, uh, maybe even a little Bob Marley, um, even some Brazilian composers, so I, I mix it up a bit. Uh, I don't just do just my own thing, or, or as we say, we, I don't just cover other people's material. I just get, try to mix it up and hopefully have it come out in my own style. You know, I think I've developed something that's a bit of an identifiable approach now after all these years. So um, that's what I'd like to do this afternoon. How long have you been playing the guitar for? Oh, let's see, uh, 40 some years, 45 years, I guess. Yeah. Wow. Um, when did you get started? Like, what got you to start playing the guitar? Johnny Rivers playing Secret Agent Man. Back in the mid-60s, I was a little kid, and I put the TV show on one night, uh, much to my parents' dismay. And it was a British spy drama, and I don't think I really understood what the TV show was about, but I really liked the music. You know, it was like, you know... <laughs> Anybody that grew up in my era, they hear that right away, they go, oh yeah, secret agent man. And I heard that and I just, I was taken by that and then I, you know, suddenly found out about all these other neat guitarists, guitar players, guitar artists. Uh, and right at that point was, of course, the, as the folk music was, this is like the late 60s, the folk music boom, as it was, was it's sort of evolving into more of the progressive rock situation where, you know, Jimi Hendrix would show up in the mix and things. So it was just the perfect time for me to connect with all these really great guitar-driven acts, the guitar, you know, based artists, and uh, really get inspired by them. Who would you say would have the biggest influence on your music career? In, in, in totality, the uh, jazz guitar pioneer Larry Coryell. I was in high school and I was uh, self-taught at the time because there were not that many guitar teachers around. And I happened to uh, go into a record store, which actually sold vinyl LPs. You've seen them in museums, of course. And, uh, <laughs> and I saw his, C his LP there, and I was like, this looks like a good, I don't know, there's something about this. This just looks really good. So I happened to look, and it was on sale. And it was $2.49, and I had $3 in my pocket. So I was like, it's destiny, I have to buy this. I bought it, I took it home, and I listened to the first track, I think, a half a dozen times before I even went on to the second track on there. Totally, I, I, I never thought a guitar could be played like that or would sound like that, so I endeavored to try to teach myself to play like him, and I fell quite short. So then I had to seek out serious professional study. But Larry Coryell uh, was always sort of a, a, a uh, an influence on me. He was an artist that I would go to see in concert. And I eventually met Larry and became very good friends with him. And uh, ultimately, I've performed with him over the years, uh, usually in duos, just two guitars, which is, you know, that's, if I really stopped to think about it, I'd be scared out of my wits sitting down on stage with Larry Coryell in front of a live audience. But uh, it, that was never the case. You know, he, he always really had the encouragement there. Um, you know, it, everything he did was always a great example of how to take the music forward. Larry was is considered one of the first of the fusion guitarists. But Larry and I have, have remained very good friends. In fact, we just spent some time together last year and we stay in touch, you know, by modern technology, email and things, of course. But, uh, you yeah, know, Larry's a very important influence on me. I think the majority of people, not in the United States in particular, but I think throughout the world have an impression that jazz is a historically appropriate music, something that harkens back to an earlier time or has a polite thing about it or is a cerebral. Uh, there, there's, there's something to it. In other words, for example, restaurants feature jazz as background music when they're, they're serving dinner or in a cocktail lounge. And that's, that's fine. That's a certain aspect of it. But that's not the only aspect. 